Right, guys, a warm, warm welcome to the uh, last stream of the evening. It is the Stormers up against Ulster after a little bit of a bloody nose for the South African teams on this weekend. Um, the Bulls going down last night against Leinster and the Lions now losing to, to the Ospreys. And then, yeah, the Sharkies, uh, <laughs> there we go, the Sharkies, uh, at least winning a game for us, uh, for the South African teams. Let's hope that the, the Stormers can do the same today for us and get past Ulster, which I which I feel they can quite do with ease today. So, uh, yeah, let's, without further ado, let's uh, go through that team lineup of the Stormers. Um, starting with the back three, we've got Warwick Kalant, Suleiman Hartzenberg, and Leland Zass in the back three. Three very exciting, strong runners, good defenders, and very agile players. Especially Suleiman Hartzenberg, who's uh, come through the ranks pretty damn well and definitely knocking on that Springbok door valiantly at the moment. If you look at the center combination, and that is one that I really fancy, is that of Dan Duplessis and Damien Willemse. Damien Willemse slots so easily into that number 12 jersey uh, with Dan Duplessis, who with unfortunate with the injury uh, last season would have probably been in the Springbok mix somewhere down the line. So a great combination there for da for, for the Stormers in the midfield, Dan Duplessis and Willemse. And in uh, the halfback pairing of Manny Libok and up-and-coming scrum off Paul DeVette, um, really looking forward to that uh, combination as well. Manny Libok playing some really good rugby and just uh, building on where he left off uh, with the Springboks last season. And in Paul DeVette really wanting to, to knock that Springbok door down. Uh, been invited to the alignment camp and now just uh, playing along with the big boys. So a very formidable backline then for the Stormers. Um, I especially looking forward to see that uh, center combination of Dan Duplessis and Willem Sir. And if this uh, back of forwards can give them that go forward ball, then uh, it will definitely happen today. Ivan Roos, Chiva Diamani and Willy Engelbrecht in the loose trio here. Ivan Roos, uh, Brilliant player, one of my favorites uh, to to definitely slot in at number eight for the Springboks. Uh, Chiva Diamani, uh, probably very unlucky, um, having been told by Rossi that he needs to work at certain aspects of his game, but a brilliant, loose, agile player. And if this game opens up, he's going to have a ball game, whether it be at seven or eight during this game. Billy Engelbrecht comes in at six and... Uh, a strong ball carrier and a good defender. Uh, definitely settling in well with the, the rest of the combination in the loose trio. Uh, lock pairing Ruben van Heeren and Salman Murat. Uh, leading by an example is Salman Murat, along with Ruben van Heeren, who was also called up to the alignment camp by Rassi Erasmus, having played some consistently good rugby over the course of the last two seasons since he's joined up with the Stormers. Uh, a very good uh, lock combination, this for the uh, Stormers. And in the front row, Nietling for Scheer, Joseph Dweber and Brock Harris. Also Nietling for Scheer getting that call up to the alignment camp, uh, along with the veteran of Brock Harris. And then uh, Joseph Dweber, like we always, we've got his, he's got his question marks, but uh, a strong ball carrier and a very aggressive player is Joseph Dweber. So, of Joseph Dweber. So uh, really looking forward to see what they can bring to the party today. Looking at the bench for the Stormers today, JJ Kotze, no Andre Gufente today, but JJ Kotze can slot in just as easily, along with Leon Lyons and Franz Mulherbe. The Stormers somewhat got a, a, a prop crisis at the moment with injuries. So Leon Lyons been brought back into the squad and then Franz Mulherbe playing off the bench today against his former teammate, uh, Stephen Kutsov. So that should be an interesting lineup. But as far as the front row combination or the bench go, uh, Franz Malherbe, Springbok, great player and should be a handful for Ulster later on in the game. Andre Smith, Ben Jason Dixon and Marcel Tienison, the, the trio of youngsters that has come through the last couple of seasons. And Andre Smith... Uh, 
lined with a couple of injuries over the course of time, probably not getting as much game time as he would have liked. But, I mean, if you look at Ben Jason Dixon and Marcel Tienison, absolutely brilliant youngsters coming through the ranks of this uh, Stormers side. And then Herschel Yankees and Ben Loder uh, just completing this lineup for the Stormers. Yankees also back to some incredible form with uh, Ben Loder. Not really impressing me that much, but uh, with the injuries to the Stormers, he slots in quite easily into the mix as well. We go and have a look. Uh, Apple Pie says, hi, crew. What is your prediction? So I've got the Stormers to win quite comfortably here. Uh, anything by more than 10 points should do it for them, although we should definitely not underestimate the Zalster side at any given time. If we go and have a look at their team lineup, uh, the back three, Mike Lowry, Rob Balakun, and uh, uh, Ethan McElroy. Very good players, very agile as well. Um, strong runner in Balakun and then Mike Lowry uh, giving me the same vibes that the Higo Keenan or a Damien Willems so with Twinkle Toes does. So, yeah, look out for Mike Lowry and especially for Ethan McElroy on that left wing. Then the midfield combination of James Hume and Stuart McCloskey has been around uh, since the ages these days. Uh, if we can call it that. Uh, but Ulster do have a solid foundation in that midfield with James Hume and Stuart McCloskey and then Nathan Doak or, and John Cooney in the 9-10. Not sure if it's Nathan Doak or Doak. Um, I think it's Nathan Doak, if I'm not wrong. But uh, he's normally a scrum off mate flyer for today's game along with a veteran in John Cooney. So looking forward to this one. and. Uh, what a battle it's going to be in the back line if the forwards fire today from this Ulster side. We look at the loose trio, Nick Timoni, David McCann, and Matt, Matty Ria. Uh, quality loose trio, this one for Ulster. And definitely one that's not going to stand back for this combination of the Stormers. Looking at the lock bearing, Kieran Treadwell and Harry uh, Sheridan. Uh, not so much known about Harry Sheridan from my side, but I know Kieran Treadwell has been around for quite a long time, um, quality player there. And if you look at the front row, Tom O'Toole, Rob Herring, and Stephen Gutsoff, this is where the Stormers are going to be up against it today, especially in the front row and the loose trio. Here for me is the standout uh, place for uh, Ulster to attack and then work it with the likes of Mike Lowry and uh, McCloskey and uh, John Cooney. We go and have a look at the bench for these guys, uh, Tom Stewart, Andrew Waterwick, Scott Wilson, Cormac uh, Uzikuzu, uh, Marcus Ria, Dave Shannon, Jake Flannery, and Stuart Moore. Um, to be honest, I don't know too much about a couple of these players, but Andrew Waterwick has been around. Marcus Ria, Dave Shannon, and Jake Fla Flannery um, we've come to witness over the course of time. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to this one as a contest. Uh, it uh, For me personally, it's a, it's a game that could go either way in the first half, but I do believe that the, the Stormers will too, have too much at home for the Ulster side. Tom O'Toole making his 100th appearance for Ulster as he comes up onto the field for Ulster, playing in a white kit today, obviously, and uh, the Stormers in their blue jerseys. So, yeah, almost time for kickoff here. And for those of you who've just missed the uh, Stormers lineup for today, Warwick Kalant, Suleiman Hartzenberg, and uh, Leland Zass in the back three with Dan Duplessis and Damien Willemse completing the uh, midfield. And then uh, Manny Libok and Paul Devet as the loose trio, com uh, the halfback pairing for this one. Achiva Diamani comes onto the field for the Stormers in his 50th appearance for uh, the franchise. And a big moment for him as well after being snapped by the Springbok uh, alignment camp and also rumors of him leaving the Stormers at some stage at the end of the season. But, uh, yep, up for his 50th game and looking forward to it. Right, the rest of the team is on to the field. Salman Murat has joined in. Uh, if we look at the forwards here, Van Rusa, Chiva Diamani and Vili Engelbrecht in the loose trio. 
with Ruben van Heeren and Salman Murat, the lock combination, and then Yetlin Kushia, Joseph Dweba, and Brock Harris completing the front row. Then on the bench, JJ Kotze, Leon Lyons, Franz Mulherbe, Andre Smith, Ben Jason Dixon, Marcel Tienesen, Herschel Yankees, and Ben Loder. One more time for Ulster, Mike Lowry, Rob Balakun, and uh, Ethan McElroy. Alone with midfield, James Hume, Stuart McCloskey, halfback pairing Nathan Doak, and John Cooney. With the forwards, Nick Timoni, David McCann, Matty Rear, lock combination, Ken Treadwell, Harry Sheridan. Uh, forwards, Tom O'Toole, Rob Herring, Stephen Kitsoff, as we're going to get ready for this game. It is going to be Ulster to kick this game off, playing from right to left on my screen. And uh, it's going to be Nathan Doak to uh, get this game underway for uh, Ulster. Right, kickoff, and it's a high hanging kickoff here from Ulster. Well collected in the air by the Stormers, just outside the 22 ball of it. Out to Jefan Roos. Roos been held up in a tackle there. Great defensive effort from uh, from uh, the Ulster side. And uh, they are going to snatch that ball as well. So Ulster's got position now. It's uh, coming out to Kieran Treadwell now. Gets off there for the support. Cooney out to Doak. Doak caught by Paul DeVette. Playing backwards now as Ulster on the 10-meter line of the Stormers. Now driven up forward by Rob Herring. John Cooney again now. Mike Lowry trying to twinkle toes. Hammered by Salman Murat in the tackle. And it's going to come back for him though. It's uh, taken up there now. McCloskey, Doak. Oh, Hume on a loop around. Here's trouble. Bella Kuhn cuts back on the inside. Up over the 22 they go. 10 meters out from the try line. Here comes uh, Ulster now on the attack here. Harry Sheridan now getting it out to Matt uh, Mary Rea. Still come Ulster. Taken up there and uh, taken forward by David McCann. Stormers defense holding out for the second. John Cooney out to Kutsoff. Kutsoff oh, beats uh, Salman Murat in the tackle there, but it's gone to ground. Now it's McCloskey. Frozen little dummy still going strong on his legs. This guy. John Cooney again. Now Packet comes again to Sheridan. Sheridan takes it up. Stormers defense still holding Doak now. Oh, it's been uh, stolen by the Stormers now. Dan Duplessis with the kick downfield. The bounce of the ball is going to be kind here for Ulster as they set it up between the halfway and the 10-meter line inside uh, the Stormers half now. Sheridan gets it away to Tom O'Toole. Tom O'Toole gets brought down on the 10-meter line of the Stormers. Now John Cooney again. Kieran Threatwell, the lock forward. Making a bit of ground here for Ulster on the 10-meter line of the Stormers. Nathan Duck gets driven back in a tackle by uh, Dweber. Now John Cooney again. Tom O'Toole. Good defense from the Stormers driving the Ulster side back. Now Mike Lowry with a kick and directly into touch, I think. Or was it? No, uh, says the touch judge. So all the way up to the 22 they go. Five meters outside of the... Uh, 22 of the Stormers, and it's been touched by a Stormers hand. So it will be a line out to Ulster. Yeah, I think it touched Paul DeVette there. So a line out here to the to Ulster, five meters outside of the 22, on the grandson side of the field. <laughs> Quinton uh, danced to ask, uh, I thought this one was going to be in Afrikaans. Look, uh, the majority, it depends on how the majority of the of the chats go. If I see a lot of Afrikaans people, I tend to change to Afrikaans. But let's keep it for English for now. Here comes Ulster from the 22-meter line. John Cooney, out it goes. Uh, on a loop around. Great defense from the Stormers. Pushing them back, knocking that ball on in the tackle. Now Mike Lowry in a bit of space. He's brought down between the 22 and the 10 meter line on the far side of the field. Nathan Doak with a little kick ahead. Uh, back for it is uh, Willem Sir gets the pass. Well, gets the pass out to Suleiman Hartzenberg, who's going to send it downfield. Looking for space. Oh, that's a brilliant kick. 
It's not going to find touch though, but it rolls over to 22 now. Back for it and kicking it away there is Ulster and a fine touch on, well, great kick there from Hume. Finding touch between the 10 and the halfway inside the Stormers half. So four and a half minutes played here. And Ulster starting like a house on fire, but the Stormers defense keeping them out at the moment. I see Ben Jason Dixon has uh, started this game. So I'm guessing, yeah, it, I'm not sure who's not there. But uh, yeah, he's slotted in in number five. So Ruben van Heerden, or is it Ruben? Yeah, <laughs> it looked like Ben Jason Dixon for a second there. But anyway, play continues here. McCloskey up to the 10 meter line here for Ulster. Doak with a long cut up pass to Balakun. Balakun in a bit of space, looking to find his support. Finds Hume, but he kicks it away. Now the Stormers have possession. What a Kalan kicks it downfield. Back for it there is uh, Hume now. Up to the halfway line. He's going to be brought down by Diamani. Gets the pass away to McCloskey. Just short of the 10 meter line of the Stormers. Five meters from the touchline. Kieran Treadwell. Tries to spin out of tank. One tackle. Sheridan now. Tackled by Ruben van Heerden. Right. Now John Cooney going with a box kick over the top. And uh, well taken there by Manny Libok. Just uh, on the 22. Didn't make the mark though. He was brought down quickly. Now Nietling for sure. Five meters outside of the 22 they go. Paul Devet is waiting for this one in the middle of the field, right on the 22-meter line. And now Libok goes high up into the air. The chase now coming. Oh, it's beautifully grabbed by Dan Duplessis. Now Irfan Ruas gets it back to Warikalan. They're going to try and run. No, Libok is going to kick it again. Looking for space in behind. Poor kick from him as it's taken by uh, Cooney now up to the halfway. He goes high up into the air. Chase now coming, but Wari Kalan should be comfortable under the ball. Gets it back to Manny Libok. Now Suleiman Arzenberg from just outside his own 22 looking to set this up. Stormers have secured this ball now. Here they come. Brock Harris, Manny Libok. Out. Poor pass. Left it behind now. And uh, Wari Kalan now five minutes from his own trial line. Gets a little skip pass to Dan Duplessis. Who sends it downfield. Not going to find touch into the hands of Balakun. Now it's Mike Lowry on the halfway line. He's going to have a run. Watch out for this guy. He's uh, getting the ball away to Balakun. Balakun back on the inside uh, to uh, Matty Ria there. Up to the 22 they go. Still they come now. Kieran Treadwell. Doug. Oh, beautiful line run from Nick Damoni. And he's going to run straight through for the opening try of this game. Right under the sticks. And Ulster onto the board early on. Deservingly seven and a half minutes in. It's uh, Nick Timoni who gets over for Ulster's first try. The number eight for Ulster. So eight minutes gone. And it's uh, the Ulster side that uh, opens up the account here. Yamani went for the wrong guy there, and Timoni ran a beautiful angle there. So trouble now for uh, the Stormers. Are they going to go upstairs to have a look at something? I don't think so. No. There's no reason not to have awarded that try. Ngaka says, hi, are you a commentator? Well, at least on YouTube for that matter. Um, haven't done it professionally. But, uh, yeah, enjoying what I do. The kick goes over and uh, it's seven points to nil Ulster lead here after eight and a half minutes. Nick Timoni with the try here for... Uh, Ulster. Right back we go to the halfway line. 
Ngaka says, guys, this is me, you're good, good at commentary. Thanks, Ngaka. Right, so uh, Libok then to restart this game. Moor comes on for Lowry, so it seems like Lowry has injured himself. It's a pity for Ulster. Oh, what a poor kickoff from Libok. Uh, didn't travel the 10, straight into touch. And uh, let's see what Ulster decide to do. It's uh, like we always say, if the magic works on the day for Libok, it works. But if it's not, let's hope it's not the case today. They had a plan to change the direction of the kickoff there and they completely mistimed it. Ivan Cornelius is high commentator. How do you feel as you weren't that well last night? Well, look, uh, every time uh, this, the Bulls lose, it's going to be a blow for South African rugby. So it's never good when uh, when that happens. Uh, so oh, I think you're referring to, to the voice. So no, the voice is fine up until now. The Afrikaans commentary always seems to scratch my, my voice a little bit in the start. But uh, yeah, thanks Ivan for asking. I'm fine. A little bit of a runny nose, but apart from that, everything is good. Scrum down here to Ulster then. And uh, Nick Timoni controlling that ball at the back. Now John Cooney, Nathan Doak gets it out to Gavin Yumu who spins out of two tackles. He's still going to go. Oh, uh, Suleiman Hudson managed to get uh, his hands on that ball and slap it back and control it as well. So uh, the Storm is now in position just outside their own 22. And uh, Paul DeVette now slowly waiting for this ball to come back. He's going to go with the box kick. Over the top now. Who's chasing? It's uh, Suleiman Hartzenberg after that ball. But well grabbed by Moore. He's on for Lowry. Waiting for this ball now as John Cooney gets it back to Kutsoff. Uh, Kutsoff is going to set it up for Ulster. On the 10-meter line inside their own half is Ulster now. As uh, John Cooney waits for it. Goes for the box kick over the top and a high kick there. Waiting for it. Well taken by Libok. But the Moni right up there to spoil it for him. And uh, it's a turnover for uh, Ulster. It's been knocked on by Manny Libok. And uh, a scrum to Ulster. Amur Sabas, why do we struggle so much today? Well, Ulster's come out firing in this uh, first couple of minutes. And in Gaka, do you play Xbox app or on your PC? No, unfortunately not in Gaka. So the pack weight, very even. 910 to the Stormers, 912 to Ulster. Two kilograms separating the two packs at the moment. So it's going to come down to pure skill at scrum time. And we know Kutsoff is a master. But Nietling is a master in the learning, while Brock Harris has got over 100 caps. 12 and a half minutes gone. Ulster leading by seven points to nil. And another chance now between the 22 and the 10 inside Stormers territory, about 10 meters out from the touchline here on the grandstand side of the field. It's John Cooney feeds it in. Timoni picks up off the back. Uh, Paul DeVette's got him covered. John Cooney again, out it goes. Oh, knock on there by Moore. And the Stormers now with an opportunity to counter. Livock decides to kick it downfield. Uh, it's going to be one bounce and uh, taken by uh, McCloskey now. Inside his 22, goes with a kick and finds touch on the 10-meter line inside his own half. So Stormers still no points on the board. Ulster scoring a beautiful try early on through the number eight, Nick Timoni. But uh, the Stormers just haven't had a, a chance to settle really in this game. It's been all Ulster for the opening 13 uh, minutes of this game. Dweba will throw this one in. <coughs> Dweba to throw it in. Finds Ruben van Heeren and here comes the driving wall from the Stormers now. Can they finally start to find a bit of momentum here? 
as it's been all Ulster for this first couple of mi 14 minutes. Oh, that ball goes down and it's going to be a scrum down to Ulster. They've done really well to disrupt that uh, that uh, driving ball and the Storm is unable to get it out. It is what it is at the moment. Ulster is ready to play here today. They're definitely not going to stand back for the Storm side today. 71% possession for Ulster, 88% territory for Ralster at the moment. So, yeah, it's been like if I say it's been all Ulster, I mean it's been all Ulster for 15 minutes in this first half. Right, and with that, I'm gonna just uh, just show the screen just there for a second as uh, I need to fill up the lungs here. Because the stormers are are uh, making me nervous here at the moment. Fifteen minutes gone. Ulster seven, Stormer zero, and it's a scrum now to Ulster here inside their own half. John Cooney to feed this one in. Solid scrum again from Ulster. Now Nick Timoni at the back. John Cooney out. It goes to McCloskey. Taking on Manny Libok, getting the pass away, but knocked on in the process. And here's a chance. Oh, thumping tackle from Moore on Leland Zas on the 10 meter line of Ulster. Going backwards on the Stormers. And I think the advantage is over. Turnover by Ulster as well. So let's just see what the referee have to say. They might. Yep, they are going to go back for that first knock from Ulster. So 16 minutes played and Ulster lead by 7 to 0. Scrum feed coming up for the Stormers though. Just inside the, well, just over the 10 meter line inside Ulster's half in the middle of the field. Opportunity for the Stormers to get going. John Dobson not looking too happy in the coaching box, but not too worried as well. Um, I also personally don't think it's time to get worried. The Stormers have uh, done well to uh, to keep the side out up until this part of the game because, like I said, Ulster's been like a house on fire in this opening 17 minutes. Now a big scrum from the Stormers, but uh, the referee blows on a whistle. And they will have a reset scrum now. Scrum contest here between uh, the Stormers and Ulster. Such an incredible contest when you look at the players. Tom O'Toole in his 100th game. Uh, the likes of Stephen Kitsoff, one of the best lucid props in world rugby. Then taking on the up-and-coming Nietling for sheer. And then Brock Harris on the other side. Uh, with over 100 caps as well. Paul Devet then to feed this one in again. And uh, such a great contest so far at scrum time. This should be a penalty to the Stormers now. Gets off hand, slipped there. Went to ground first, but uh, the referee says they will have yet another scrum. So two resets there. Yeah, it looked like it was Nietling for sure who, who got uh, under the pressure of cuts of there. Right. So yet another scrum feat. Uh, we've wasted about two and a half minutes through this two reset scrums. And uh, Paul DeVette will now finally feed it in. And it slips again. This time it's going to be a penalty. Cuts off slipping. He's buying. And it's good to see that uh, Nietling for sure is giving uh, Cuts off a go for his money today. 
So what will the Stormers do? Go do a go for goal and get the free points or do they kick for touch here? It is in kicking distance for Libok and he is going to have a shot at goal from uh, just over the 10 meter line inside Ulster's half. Mamusa says that uh, cuts off looks tired and old. <laughs> I can tell you what, uh, he doesn't look too tired. He is getting a little bit old, but he's still fine for a prop. So a long career left in him, I think, uh, for Kitsov. But it's Libok who's going to have a shot at goal now. And with 20 minutes gone, it's uh, Ulster who's dominated this opening 20 minutes. And that kick is going to go to the left of the post. Not a great kick from Lebok. And the score remains seven points to nil. And it pretty much sums up the first 20 minutes of this game. So it's going to be a 22 meter restart. Nathan Doak to uh, <laughs> restart this one. <laughs> Mamuta says the red is starting to fade. Looks like a cheap rusty Datsun. <laughs> Here we go with the restart then uh, and waiting for that ball. What a clump now. He's going to go with a little grubber kick through for Leland Zaster chase, but Moore has done well to collect that ball, but steps into touch. And it will be a line out to the Stormers who throws it in quickly. Here they come now. It's. Uh, Damien Villains are trying to twinkle toes his way through on the halfway line. Gets uh, tackled by the Rusty Dutts and the penalty well, penalty to the Stormers again. They're not rolling or not releasing the tackler. And Damien Villains has stayed down there as well. So it seems like the Rusty uh, Dutts can still hurt a little bit. So Willemsen now receiving attention. But the penalty will be that of the Stormers. And in again in a kickable position right in the middle of the field. This time between the halfway and the 10 meter line inside Ulster's half. Right. Still receiving attention is uh, cuts off now. Achnot gets off uh, Willems, uh, but he's back on his feet, and uh, play should continue from here. It's going to be Libok to have another shot at goal here for uh, the Stormers. Missed his first attempt. Uh, in the same, same position, just a, flip, a little bit further downfield. But uh, this one just a little bit further out in uh, round about the same uh, length of the field. Richard uh, Kami says, I know you guys now with clips are good, but I think not Libok is so good as what he has made. He can hit his heart, but his head is more cold and it's warm. And he is the Spanish skopper. Look, Richard, I agree 100% that uh, Libok needs to work on his overall goal kicking. Um, it's as if he fires one second and uh, misfires the next. But, uh, I mean, his general kicking is really good, uh, apart from that poor kick kickoff earlier on. But uh, his re reading of the game, very good. And as I try and, and defend him, he misses another kick to the left. So that's six points gone a begging for the Stormers. But, yeah, clearly he needs to work on his goal kicking if he wants to be the number one choice uh, flyer for the Springboks. But uh, general play and running, very solid. Right, here comes Nathan Doak now with the restart again. And taken all by Dan Duplessis. And a thumping tackle on him. But they've managed to get the ball back. Another little chip kick by uh, Warwick Kalant. But beautifully picked up by uh, Balakun this time for Ulster. John Cooney now gets it underhand, gets the ball away to Ria. 
Yeah, the storm is on. I've given away a penalty there. And uh, Salman Murat gives away the penalty. So, Ulster again now with an opportunity to kick this downfield. Right, Nathan Doak to uh, kick this one downfield for Ulster from roundabout between the 10 and the halfway inside their own half. And he's going to find touch right about between the 22 and the 10 inside uh, Stormers territory. Questions needs to be asked whether Dan Duplessis was played in the air there when he took that ball, that massive tackle on, on Duplessis. But uh, either way, it is uh, Ronan Keller to throw this one in now for Ulster. And well taken there by Ulster as they work the blind side here. Nick Timoni again trying to make some valuable ground for Ulster. It's Kieran Treadwell driving it up right in the middle of the field between the 22 and the 10 meter line of the Stormers. Need to release the tackler there, McCloskey. Now Nathan Doak out to Hume. Driven back in a tackle by Ruben van Heerden. Now cuts off with a little pop pass to Sheridan. He's driven back up to the 10 meter line. Why, Vili? Why? There's a scuffle going on in the back play. Now it opens up to Treadwell. Gets it out to Bella Kuhn. Bella Kuhn out to Nick Timoni. Cuts back on the inside. Up, oh, up to the 22 they go. Moving towards the middle of the field now. It's uh, taken there by the left winger, McElroy. He tries to pick and go. Now John Cooney again out to Kutsov. Good tackle from Salman. Well, from Willy Leroux. Ach, Willy Engelbrecht, sorry. Now McCloskey out to Bella Kuhn again. Stormers defense, really good. Now Brock Harris going to get pinned for not rolling away. Penalty advantage. Oh, that's a forward pass, surely. But uh, they are going to come back for the uh, penalty to uh, Ulster right in the middle of the field, just outside the 22. And a chance to maybe extend that lead now for Ulster. So, yeah, not a, not a great start here for the Stormers in this game. It's been going a little bit sideways for them in this opening 26 minutes or so. Feyenoord Rotenbach says, Levok is choking again. It is it is what it is, unfortunately. Uh, like I say, Levok can be brilliant one day and very, very average and shocking the next game. But uh, at least we get him more, more on the good side than the bad side often. So, yeah, um, last week he was brilliant. And uh, today he's not so brilliant for the opening 27 minutes of this game. John Cooney's going to go for a goal here and uh, oh, <laughs> hits the upright right in front. So that's a really poor kick. Dan Duplessis kicks it downfield and it's going to find touch round about on the halfway line. So a lead off there for the Stormers. <coughs> well, that one not so much up to the halfway between the 10 and the uh, the halfway line inside Stormers territory, but literally a miss kick right in front of the goal by John Cooney on that occasion. Keller to throw this one in for uh, Ulster and again slapped back by them. Bella Kuhn, the right winger, out to McCloskey, gets it out to Rhea. Rhea now, here they come again. Dirk on a loop around, gets a long pass out to McElroy. Who puts it on the boot now to kick downfield a bit out of position here? Here's the Stormers, and that ball is going to roll over into touch. And it's going to be a 50 22 as well now for Ulster. So the lineout will be theirs. Well, when things go wrong, it goes terribly wrong. It's a lineout to Ulster, 10 meters from the Stormers try line. 
on the grandstand side of the field here. So Keller will throw this one in for Ulster. And uh, with 12 minutes to play in this first half, it's been all Ulster from start to finish of this first half, it seems. To the back, or oh, was there an interference from the Stormers? But uh, no, says the referee, knocked on by Ulster. And it's going to be a scrum down to the Stormers. A little bit of a let off there for them. So, uh, cuts off just uh, arguing there with the referee. Yeah, that should be a... Well, firstly, it wasn't thrown in straight by Ulster. So, I guess that is why uh, the Stormers didn't get penalized for that. So, luckily for them... Well, wait... Was there interference? Yeah. So we're going to get another penalty here for Ulster. It seems time is off at the moment. So they're just having an argument. They are going to go upstairs to have a look at it. But I could have sworn when I saw, I don't have any uh, audio of my sight, but it looked like the referee first said it was thrown in skew. And then there was this interference from Dweber on uh, the jumpers so either way it should be called for a scrum here and i think that is what it's going to be yeah so let off the hook there nick walker says good evening uh love your rugby channels for videos thanks nick uh, there will be a few more coming soon but uh just in good time it's just been so busy as of late Clinton Tron says Stormers need to re reassess their game plan. And Gaka asks if I still play. Yes, I do. Um, but mostly these days I just play online. Uh, a lot more fun when you actually got a challenge and not against the AI. But anyway, scrum down to the Stormers then. Time is back on the clock here. And uh, Paul DeVette to feed this one in for the Stormers. Big scrum coming again. And a penalty awarded to the Stormers on that occasion. Well, the Stormers and cuts off this time a little bit on the receiving end after being so destructive for the Stormers over, over the last couple of seasons. Are now on the receiving end. So Libok now to kick this downfield from about 15 meters out from his own try line. Mamusa says Stormers need to sub one of the back rows for a fetcher and one of the locks. Not robust enough by the locks. We need more beef in the engine room. That's why we're struggling. Yeah, pretty sums it up. Um, a guy like Ben Jason Dixon or Marcel Tienison, um, or I, both of them should come onto the field. The problem is, or either switch the Amani to number eight and put Yefan on number seven. But uh, Vili Leroux, not known for being a top class fetcher. A little bit sloppy from the Stormers from that lineup, but they do eventually get it back. And now Ruben van Heeren to drive it forward up to the 10 meter line. Paul de Wett, uh, waiting to get the kick under the air there. And Suleiman Hartzenberg chasing up after that, but. Uh, the ball spills to the back and Nick Timoni picks it up on the 10-meter line of Ulster. About uh, 15 meters out from the uh, left-hand touch line here. Nick, uh, well, John Cooney now with the uh, box kick over the top. And waiting for it. Libok knocks it on. And uh, now John Cooney gets it back for Ulster. Nick Timoni with a pass out wide to McCloskey. Long cutoff pass again. To Balakun on the halfway. Oh, beautiful little pass to uh, Hume there. Up over the 10 meter line he goes. Now, quick ball. It's Nathan Doak. Gets it. Or Nathan Doak, sorry. Gets it out to Ronan Keller. Keller Doak. Now back again to uh, Moore. Back to Doak. Doak goes to the kick. Playing a little bit backwards there was Ulster. And he gets a beautiful kick away. Quick throw in from Leland Zuss, and he kicks it downfield and into touch at round about 
I guess that between the 10 and the halfway line inside Stormers territory. Seven minutes or seven and a half minutes to go in this first half. Right, seven to go in this first half. And uh, really impressed by the way Ulster. That was a forward pass from Balakun to uh, to Hume as well. So uh, they, they were let off the hook there was Ulster. Oh, and another inside pass from Doak to Balakun. And uh, now Keller up to the 10-meter line of the Stormers. Cooney again, Doak. Out to McCloskey, knocked on by McElroy. And it will be a scrum between the 10 and the halfway line in the middle of the field inside Stormers territory. A scrum to the Stormers. But a lovely play by Ulster. Having control of possession and territory at the moment. And uh, really pushing the Stormers in defense. Um, they'll definitely have to really come up with something as the Stormers. Otherwise, they're going to really get tired from defending the whole time. But no doubt that they're a fit outfit. And when those youngsters come up in the second half, they will definitely be ready and willing. Six minutes to go here in the first half. Uh, scrum feet to the Stormers. Paul Devet to feed this one in. It's not... Uh, Stopping the crowd from doing the Mexican wave. Trailing by seven points at the moment. The spirit in the Cape Town Stadium, always great. I've been there a couple of times now. And uh, really enjoying my rugby when I go to watch it there. Another reset scrum. And I, I'm not sure how many minutes have gone a waste through reset scrums and stuff today. But I'm guessing at least five plus minutes. Right, again, we're going to have the reset. Five minutes to play in this uh, first half. Ulster leading seven points to nil. Paul DeVette defeated in, controlled at the back by Jovan Roos. Oh, now they need to get this out. Big scrum from Ulster, and they win a penalty there. This time, the Stormers on the receiving end of the scrum penalty and cuts off giving Nietling Bashir. Uh, a little pat on the on the on the shoulder and saying, "I've got you this time." So Ulster with the penalty. Do they kick for goal here? Standing up in the scrum is the call from the referee, and John Cooney will have another shot at goal. Michaela says the Stormers will win tonight. Richard Tulsa says the Stormers are the spell. Plan a bikini with Ferraner, but I hope there is no green grass in and 7 0 is not a massive forsprung. No, look, uh, I think it's very similar to that game of last night where the Bulls looked really good throughout up until half time. But I do, I do know uh, that the Stormers will come back firing in the second half for sure. But uh, the big problem is that they need to score first in that second half and prevent. Uh, Ulster from getting any more points because uh, if this kick goes over, it's 10 points to nil and uh, a long road for the Stormers if they can see more points. So from about uh, between the 10 and the halfway line in the middle of the field, John Cooney this time and again to the right of the post. So a let off again for the Stormers, even things up with Libok missing two penalty kicks now, evening it up. So it's just a try, the early try by Nick Timoni, separating the two teams in an obviously 70-odd plus position right for Ulster and about an 80-plus territory advantage. So the Stormers can soak that up and come out in the second half firing. Uh, Ulster is going to have a hard time to keep up with them. So restart from the 22 here. Manny Libok goes up high. The chase coming from Diamani and taken in by McElroy. Just inside the Stormers half now. John Cooney, back it comes now. Taken up by Rhea. He's driven back in the tackle by Ruiz. And now on a 10-meter line, Doak needs to kick. He kicks it high. 
The chase across kick high kick and beautifully grabbed by Bella Kuhn. And uh, unfortunately for Ulster, there was just a little knock on from Bella Kuhn. And it will be a scrum down to the Stormers. Richard Kamis, uh, Frad Asso, who like the bench funny. For the man of an Alster, Dalkit Kits of a big inside information to the Stormers side gedeel. Uh, the bench for uh, for uh, Alster, Tom Stewart, Andrew Waterwick, Scott Wilson, Marcus Rea. No, look, I don't really fear the bench of Alster compared to that of the Stormers. So Ben Jason Dixon, Marcel Tunison will definitely have to come onto the field just to get to that breakdowns quicker. And set things up for them. But with two minutes to go, the Stormers settled nicely inside their own half. Uh, just inside between the 10 and the 22 on the far side of the field. About 10 meters out from the touchline. So not really the, the position on the field to attack. But let's see. If there's one team that can, it's the Stormers. Solid scrum this time round from the Stormers. Paul DeVette will have to get this one out now. Does so. Gets it out to Libok. Now it's Dan Duplessis. Libok on a loop around. Gets the pass away to Warwick Geland. Out to Suleiman Arts and that. He's into space and away he goes. Now gets the inside pass. Back it comes to Libok. And still the Storm is in control. Oh, the hands from the side. Willemsen with a step up over the 22. They go. But another loose pass. And uh, a little knock-on from Ulster. So scrum down to the Stormers on the 22-meter line with uh, less than a minute to go. Some incredible hands by the Stormers in that movement to get where they are now. So uh, was there a knock-on from Ulster? That's the big question, though. Yeah, there was. Definitely was from... Uh, the number six flanker there, uh, Matty Rea. So now the Stormers with one last chance here before halftime. About uh, 10 seconds on the real clock. I'm a little bit behind. Uh, Ulster should have been up by 50 already, <laughs> says uh, Mamursa. Richard says that is a bull on the steen and maar for South Africa met die stormers die knoop die raak. Dit sal briljant wees as daar klompe is as span in die laaste aches en dan virus. Ja, it will, it will definitely help. And um, Gaka, just to sum it up, I've been playing rugby games since the tender age of uh, of around six, seven, eight. Uh, started with Jonah Lomu rugby all the way back on PS1. Right, stormers now with the scrum here. And struggling a little bit. Jovan Roos gets that ball out, but it's loose. Paul De Wett does well to get the pass away to Suleiman Hartzenberg. But the Stormers have lost a bit of ground. Now Ruben van Heerden. Support play there for the Stormers just outside the 22 of Ulster. Now Libok oh, knocked on by Willy Engelbrecht. And that is going to be the end of the first half. And the Stormers will have to have a strong talk in the dressing room. It's uh, It's been 40 minutes and it's all been Ulster. Um, I'm not even uh, giving the Stormers uh, a 10 percenter of this first half. They've just been defending for dear life in this first half. Possession territory, massive to Ulster. I'm guessing around 70% odd for Ulster in possession and 80% plus in territory. And... Uh, yeah, the score should probably have been 13-6 with all the kicks missed. But uh, it still stays 7 points to nil at halftime. I'm going to take a quick break. But when we do come back, we will be doing the uh, second half.
Right, guys, we are back here for the second half of this game between Ulster and the Stormers. Uh, Ulster by seven points to nil here at half time. And uh, I just want to add to this interesting comments. Uh, Bones uh, Jones owns phones. Uh, I think you own a lot of phones because you don't have a clue what you're talking about. But uh, super rugby teams would smash these two teams, says Bones Jones. But uh, I highly disagree. And uh, yeah, I can I can firmly say that uh, South Africa and Ireland are the two best teams in the world right now. And uh, yeah, if that was the case, that Super Rugby teams would beat us, then uh, New Zealand is probably the world champions at the moment, which they're not. So uh, yeah, uh, just to leave it at that for now. Uh, Flo, do you think Ulster win? Um, if they're going to come out the way they've played in that first half and do more of the same, it's definitely going to be an Ulster win. But uh, I can't even do an assessment on the Stormers' side because they've just been defending all day long. Um, I don't think that statistics is correct. They say 67% possession to uh, Ulster, but I felt like it was more in the 70s. 72 tackles made by the Stormers to the 19 of Ulster. 243 meters going to 63 for Ulster. Um, that's definitely more than 67% possession. Um, Gaka, thank you for that one. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, Mabursa says Ulster should have been up by 50 already. Stormers was really poor in that first half. I, don't, I wouldn't say, look, from, from the standard that they've set over the course of the year and last year, um, they definitely are not on the same level that they should be. But Ulster has come out flying in this game. And uh, they've been really good for uh, 40 minutes controlling possession and territory. So the Stormers will have to change that if they're going to want to win this game here in the second half. And uh, I'm full of confidence that, uh, that they definitely can do this. I think the Stormers will come back and... Uh, well, if they do score first, then we're in for one hell of a game. But if Ulster scores first, it's going to put that momentum in perspective for them. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get the second half underway. It's going to be Manny Libok to kick this game off for us, playing from right to left on my screen. And here we go. It's a high kickoff, and uh, it's going to be knocked on by the Stormers from that kickoff. So, scrum down to Ulster. Right on the 22 meter inside their own half. <laughs> Mamusa says, Leave Guru right here. This is his hobby. And did he work for Duni? Guru is uh, too good for super sport. Thanks, uh, Mamusa. But yeah, it is, it is a hobby. And I really enjoy it when I do it. Uh, I probably haven't been able to do it as much as I, I would have loved to this year. But uh, like I said, there's there's other stuff that also needs to be done, unfortunately. And I can't always be be available. So, yeah, it is a hobby. And it's probably the only time that I can actually watch rugby is when I do the commentary on these weekends. So I'm enjoying it thoroughly. So scrub down here to Ulster. A minute gone in the second half. There's just 39 left. Can uh, the Stormers come up with something special? George Cooney to feed that one in. Here comes the big scrum from the Stormers, but it's going to be a penalty against him for uh, wheeling the scrum. And uh, Brock Harris, with a big smile on his face, knows exactly what he did wrong there. So, chance for Ulster to clear from their own 22 here, about 10 meters from the touchline on the far side of the field. Nathan Doak with that kick, and uh, he is going to find touch right on halfway. So Stormers will have to defend once more. Throw in to come. Ronan Keller will feed it in. Who win this game? I still think the Stormers will pull it through. Right, Gallagher throws it in, finds his jumper, Sheridan. Maul has gone down now, Ronan Keller, it's from off Doak out to uh, McCloskey. 
Another solid defense there from the Stormers. George Cooney right on halfway in the middle of the field. Doak again goes to the high up and under. That is going to go. Oh, it's going to play stay in field. Having to be slapped back. But now Leland Sass into a bit of space. Gets the pass out to Fisher. Now it's Brock Harris. He needs to just set it down and set it up for him. Now comes back Baldovet again. It's Lehman Arzenberg out wide to uh, Warwick Kalant. who puts a little stab through. Well picked up by Hume on that occasion. Storm is lucky not to concede a penalty for diving on the player there. Now John Cooney. Back it comes to Sheridan. He's driven back in the tackle by the Stormers. Cooney do have possession between the 10 and the halfway line here inside Ulster's half. 10 meters from the right and touch line. Goes with the uh, box kick over the top and Libok has got it. Good uh, take there under the high ball. Paul De Wett now waiting for it. Ruben van Heerden sets it up again for the Stormers. Now, oh, penalty to the Stormers there. No clear release from Ulster. And a chance now for the Stormers to kick this downfield. Right. Libok to kick this downfield. And uh, he is going to find touch around about five meters inside the 22 of Ulster. A great opportunity now for the Stormers. Mamursa says, Stormers defense look a bit suspect tonight. Not its usual self, solid but not great. Yeah, look, the gaps do open up here and there. But uh, when you make 74 tackles to 26, it tells you the tale of the story. Under pressure for most of that first half. You can only defend for that long. Dweba with the throw in now here on the 22-meter line. And to the back they go. Chiva Diamani takes it in. Here comes the driving mall. Oh, I say driving mall, but it's not really moving. It's not really driving at all. But uh, now another penalty advantage for the Stormers. Uh, chance either way. Libok now not going to get the support play cat catched on the 22-meter line. Now what a Kalant out wide. There goes Lehman Hartzenbach with a little chip ahead. But uh, well collected by Ulster. And we're going to come back for a penalty to the Stormers. That penalty ran about 20 meters out from the left and touch line. Five meters inside the 22 of Ulster. So decision time here for the Stormers. Um, at this stage of the game, I would go for the corner. And that is exactly what the Stormers are going to do. They're going to kick this to the corner. And uh, five meters out from the try line now. Stormers couldn't set that driving mall, which is a little bit worrying that they now have gone for the kick to touch. Maybe just get quick ball and work it through the back line instead of trying to drive this up. Now taken by Van Heeren. Exactly what they do quickly off the back. Dweba. Dweba still going. Now five meters out from the try line. Here Van Roos puts his head down. Three meters out. Oh, and there's a knockout from the Stormers. And it's going to be a scrum down to Ulster. Knocked on by Ia van Roos. And, uh, well, it almost looked like Dweba was going to have the momentum to, to go full swing there. But uh, a try-saving tackle from Nathan Doak uh, definitely stopped him in his tracks. And now the Stormers having to defend again, but... Uh, this time, at least, uh, it's five meters out from the Ulster's try line. Amursa says, uh, Ruben, fun here and interesting this year. When he came here, he was bigger and passed the collision. Now he looks lighter and more uh, line cut forward. Yeah, he's lost a lot of weight. Uh, I think he's a more refined player. A lot more mobile. Um, and I think a much better player than he was when he when he went to the Sharks originally and even when he played in overseas. So 
Hats off to him. Carlos Sass, Kenny Sharks, Dark Gewen. So far, the only South African team to win this weekend. Uh, final score was what 23 13 for the Sharks against Edinburgh. Right, John Cooney to feed this one in for uh, Ulster. Five meters out from their own try line in the middle of the field. And another big scrum here. Solid to say the least here from both sides. Cooney gets it out to Nathan Doak, who uh, puts it on the boot and a decent clearance. All the way up to between the 22 and the 10 meter line inside Ulster's half in on the uh, grandstand side of the field. Best Telugu Healthcare asks, please predict who will win. So I'm going to go and say the Stormers by the smallest of margins here. Right, Dweba to throw this one in. To the back they go. Chiva Diamani out to Ruben van here, then gets the ball out to Leland Zas. Sets it up. And uh, now Murat. Still the storm has come between the 10 and the 22 of uh, Ulster in the middle of the field. Van Heerden again. Now it's Paul De Wet out to Lubbock. And it's uh, Willems who stabs it through, looking for space in behind. It's going to go and find touch around about 10 meters out from the Ulster try line. And uh, it's going to be an Ulster uh, line out. 10 meters from their own try line here is Ulster. But uh, brilliant play so far from them. Just soaking up the Stormers' pressure now in this opening nine minutes of the second half. So, for 50 minutes, it's been Ulster. Can the Stormers turn the tide? Yes, they can. They steal this line out as well. And now Paul De Wett, uh drops that ball back. It's uh, Willy Engelbrecht and Leland Sass having to recover it for the Stormers. Now Paul De Wett at Chiva Diamani again. Right in the middle of the field, 15 meters out. Nietling for sure now. Great solid defense from Ulster, putting the Stormers under pressure. Paul De Wett now under some serious trouble here. Penalty to Ulster. And uh, holding on to that ball was uh, Paul De Wett. But sheer pressure in defense from Ulster. And they almost looked like a winning team. Champions team this Ulster side today. As Kieran Treadwell has stayed down the lock forward of Ulster, who's had a solid game so far. So Kieran Treadwell just going to receive uh, some attention here while they wait for Nathan Doak. Well, Nathan Doak needs to kick it, says the referee. And uh, that one is going to find touch roundabout on the 10 meter line of the Stormers on the far side of the field. Nemanja says, nah, all bolters must stay where they are and enjoy the euros and pounds. <laughs> so, some great work there done on the ground by, uh, I think it's a replacement hooker on the field for for uh, Ulster, Tom Stewart, who won that ball on the ground for them. Five penalties conceded by both sides uh, in this game. So discipline right up there at the moment. Kieran Treadwell still receiving some attention here. Might just have a little run at the clock because I'm a little bit behind. Nick Walker says weather is awful here in the UK and people are friendly. I know a lot of UK people that are very friendly, Nick. <laughs> Right, seems like the Stormers are going to ring on the changes now. It's been Jason Dixon and uh, JJ Kotze comes on to the field, as well as Franz Malherbe. So, uh, bringing in the reinforcements now is the Stormers. And Gutsoff now, going to scrum up against his old teammate, 
Franz Mol Herben, Springbok teammate. Carlos Fravale, the Bulls now be locked in the Lions and the Sharks. Because he's sickly, Carlos. I get the pillow, it's not too early. The Lions is at the top 8 out. And the Sharks dwell there, Evers in the undergrond rond. But uh, anyway, it is going to be a lineup now to Ulster on the 10 meter line of the Stormers on the far side of the field. Can. Uh, well, Marcel Tienison also on the field now for the Stormers. So, valuable changes now come on to the field for the Stormers here. Nick Walker, are you based in the Cape at Rugby Guru? Yes, I am. Uh, since the start of this year, I am in the uh, Cape region, Nick Walker. Right, Keller, well, Tom Stewart, sorry, to throw this one in for uh, Ulster. Line-up taken by Kieran Treadwell, but into touch they go. So it will be a Stormers line-up now between the halfway and the 10-meter line inside their own half. So Scala is still on the field, so not sure who that replacement was. Was just maybe on for a second. Right, so Kotsa then to throw this one in. And uh, the line out taken by Ben Jason Dixon. Here comes the driving wall from uh, the Stormers. Starting to make headway now up over the halfway they go. Fresh legs uh, working hard there in the engine room for the Stormers at the moment. Paul DeVette waiting for that. Gets it out now. He's going to have to snipe on his own there. Going to need support now at the breakdown, which they do get just up over halfway. Manny Libok gets scrum off towards the middle of the field. It's uh, taken up by Yefan Rus. Gets a lovely little pass to Damien Willems. Gets the pass out to Warwick Geland. Geland out to Leland Sass. Takes the man head on. And uh, just short of the halfway line now. Ach, after 22 now. Here they come again, the Stormers now. It's now or never for the Stormers here. Libok out to Murak. Stormers will need to get some points on the board. Not rolling away there, but the referee's not really playing the advantage at all. Now Willems are going with the kick again. That's a poor kick. Straight into the hands of the Ulster player, and they kick it downfield. Now Libok having to cross back all the way back now. He's going to have a run now. Libok out to Diamani. Was there a late hit on uh, Libok? Ben Jason Dixon out to Warwick Kalan. Kalan gets the pass out to Damien Willems. Uh, Willems out to Murat on the 10-meter line of the Stormers. Now Suleiman Hartzenberg, he's into a bit of space now. Opens it up beautifully. Needs to get the pass back on the inside. Pulled away, tackled on the 22. Gets the offload to uh, Suleiman Hartzenberg. He's just five meters out. Now he's brought to ground. Right in the middle here for Ruas. Ruas for the try line. Has he got there? I don't think so. I don't think so. He might have lost that ball. When he tried to dot it down. But they're going to go upstairs to have a look. But it didn't look like Jefan Roos was very confident. So uh, a great breakout from Hartzenberg. And some great link-up play. But uh, let's see what the TMO will decide. I'll have a look at the replay here. Let's have a look. Ah, he was short when he dotted down. And in, in the process, lost that ball. So, yeah, no, he was short of the try line. And then uh, the ball went forward. So, it will be a scrum down to uh, Ulster here. Five meters out from their own try line, surely. Try or no try. It can't be a try because it, it wasn't over the whitewash there. And... Uh, there was also no uh, downward pressure. So clear knock on for me. And uh, they're just milking this replay for me. So there it is. No try, knock on. And it will be a scrum down to Ulster. Five meters out from their try line. Well... The Stormers still trying hard. 
But Ulster the defense is really doing well at the moment. As long as the Stormers can keep the score as it is and then get their own try, then uh, they should be good for this one. But Ulster trying to hold on valiantly to that lead at the moment. Right, so scrum down to Ulster. It's been a long day. <laughs> right. Cooney to feed this one in for the for Ulster. Good solid scrum again. Now the Stormers get the shove on here. Big scrum from the Stormers and they get the penalty. Take the three points on offer and settle back. Cuts off destroyed the there by Malharba. And the Stormers now. With an easy chance to get three points. Libok then to... Will he have a shot at goal? I think he will. With uh, 26 minutes to go in this game. The Storm is now looking to get their first points on the board. But a massive, massive, massive scrum from the men in blue there. Cuts off absolutely destroyed. Mark Pretoria says a shout out to the Cape Town fans all the way from Ireland. And Libok surely can't miss this one from right in front. 25 minutes to play in this game. And the Stormers now looking to get their first points of the game. That one goes straight through the middle and uh, seven points to three it is. And now we've got a massive game on our hands here. 25 minutes to play. And from here on, the Stormers just need to build. Ben Lauder on the field as well. Not sure who he's replaced then. Leland Zass is still on the field, so it might be Suleiman Hartzenberg or even uh, Warwick Kalant who might have left the field. The kickoff secured here by Ulster and catching the Stormers a little bit of sleep, but uh, it will go down. The ball was held up there by the Stormers and it will be a scrum to them between the 10 and the 22 inside their own half. Right, so, uh, yeah, it's getting exhausting doing this commentary because it's such an uh, impressive uh, flowing game at times that, uh, yeah, the voice is sore from all the work today. Um, straight from 3 o'clock up until now. Just been doing commentary, but I uh, love it. Kutsov has left the field. He's done his part. Uh, the... Ulster side has now cleared the front row bench. Tom Stewart, Andrew Warwick, and Scott Wilson onto the field. Um, for the Stormers, also a couple of replacements. Uh, Herschel Yankees and Ben Lauder. So I think it's only Brock Harris, the all-timer, and uh, Murat and Ruben van Heeren, who hasn't left the field. Uh, Andre Smith and... Uh, Leon Lyons still the only uh, uh, replacements to come on for the Stormers. Herschel Yankees to feed that one in. Now gets the ball out. Manny Libok on a loop around. Philipsa gets the pass away now. It's Galant with the kick downfield. I see Lauda is on the place. For uh, Dan Duplessis, they've let it bounce that one and puts them under pressure. Lauder starts down that kick, but unfortunately into touch. And it's going to be an Ulster line out, five meters out from their own try line. Well, great pressure from Ben Lauder there. Mistake, uh, Ulster. Whoa, the line out has been stolen by the Stormers and play goes on. The Stormers now have possession, but isolated there. 
Let's just see what... I uh, couldn't see the play there because it all happened so quickly. The cameras wasn't even on the players. So let's just see what happened. Yeah, so they tried to throw that one in quickly. The Stormers caught the ball, got tackled high there in the air. So it should be a penalty to the Stormers. Yeah, it is. So penalty to the Stormers, five meters out from the try line. Kick this to the corner or go for the scrum. The scrum might not be the right option with the new uh, front row onto the field for Ulster. No, they are going to go for the touch. And uh, setting up that line out five meters out. From the try line on the far side of the field. It's an opportunity for the Stormers. The best that they've had this whole game long. 22 minutes to go in this game. JJ Kort said to throw this one in. He needs to be solid with his throw in. Go to the front. Yep, to the front they go. Ruben van Heerden. Oh, it's been knocked on by the Stormers. And uh, that's just poor. Oh, and uh, not sure what is going on here at the moment. Yeah, they, the referee has called for the scrum. Ulster could have played on and uh, they could have almost ran the whole length of the field to score a try. But uh, they paused for a second and that made the referee blow the whistle there. Right, scrum down to Ulster. Five meters out from their own try line. Can the Stormers put some pressure on that scrum again? The last quarter of the game to come now. And the Stormers only managing three points for the first 20 minutes effort. They need to get a try. This game, anybody's at the moment. The Stormers putting that pressure on Ulster, which they put on them in the first half. And uh, they've answered with some solid defense themselves. John Cooney with the feet. That's a lot more solid from Ulster. Nick Timoni off the back picks it up. Tackled by Lebok. Now 10 meters out from their own trial line. John Cooney waiting for that ball. Gets it out now to Nathan Doak. Nathan Doak with a kick downfield. Not going to find touch now. Find Suleiman. Uh, well, Ben Lauder, sorry. And uh, he's brought to ground. Five meters outside of the 22. Now Diamani. Runs into a, a white brick wall there. Driven back now between the 22 and the 10. Here they come. Ben Jason Dixon gets hammered back. That's a little offload to Lebok. Now back to Jovan Roos. Roos gets over the advantage line. Now Herschel Yankees. Yankees to uh, Marcel Tienison. A little bit isolated. Now Brock Harris with a little slap back there. Warwick Holland with a little chip kick over the top into the hands of Lebok. Lebok is going to need support though. And uh, Storm is now 10 meters from the try line. Ball slapped down. That's a professional foul. Surely by uh, the number seven flanker there. But uh, the referee only gives a penalty. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There he goes. Here's the yellow card. So right call from the referee. And... Uh, it's the number seven, uh, David McCann, that gets canned to the bin here. Seven points to three. What did they do? Momentum is on their side, but uh, three points now will make it a one-point game. Decision time for the Stormers. What will they do? It seems like they're going to go for the corner again. They want to take the lead in this game, which is probably right, given that they want to uh, at least get into the lead here. <coughs> 18 minutes to go in this game. And the Storm is now with another opportunity, this time with one man extra on the field. Salman Murat has stayed down here for the Storm is so... We'll have to run a minute back here. So will Murat leave the field here and Andre Smith come on? No, he is going to continue Salman Murat. So Stormers have this line out. 
and uh, it's five meters out from the try line. Right, JJ Kotze with the throw in. Oh, the ball has been snatched by Ulster. Now Nathan Doak has got it. Ten meters from his own try line. John Cooney waiting for that ball. Gets it out to Ria. That uh, ball is coming back very slowly for Ulster. Ten meters from the round try line. About uh, 15 meters out from the far side touch line. John Cooney with a box kick over the top. And uh, he will find touch. Around about five meters outside of the 22. So still a good attacking line out here for the Stormers. But incredible work done there by Ulster to steal that ball in the line-out. So, uh, <laughs> Clinton says you need a long break. I think so too. So, let's disappear there for a second and just uh, fill up the lungs while we do that. Right, so Brock Harris now off the field here for the Stormers as well. Leon Lyons on. The Storm has now got that line out taken up by Marcel Tienison now. Still five meters outside of the 22, right in the middle of the field. Gets the pass now out to Andre Smith, who's also on the field. Now Ruben van Heerden. A little offload now to Ben Jason Dixon. Why would you want to offload? He knocks it on in the process. And uh, advantage now to Ulster. If they're going to try and run this from their own 22, it's Nick Timoni. Makes it up to the 22-meter line. Now Nathan Doak with the kick. And they clear it again. Too many mistakes from the Stormers. Now going to cost them the game if they're not careful. So that line out now run about between the 10 and the halfway line inside Stormers, uh, inside Ulster's territory. On the uh, grandstand side of the field. The Stormers supporters looking on in disbelief here. Kotze will throw this one in again for the... Well, time has been stopped for an injury. So we're going to run the clock back another minute here. Ulster receiving some attention on that occasion. And uh, with 17 minutes or 16 and a half minutes to go, this is truly anybody's game. The Stormers just need to cut out the mistakes. Uh, Ulster still have uh, a man in the bin for another seven and a half minutes. So up until 10 minutes left, they're going to be with 14 men. The Stormers just need to be clinical at this stage, they've got good uh, position on the field, run about on the 10-meter line of Ulster. So they really need to come out now firing. To the back they go. Tienison has done well to collect that ball. They set up the driving mall now. Storm is starting to move forward now. Almost uh, up to the 22, but Ben Jason Dixon hammered back in a tackle. Now waiting, JJ Kotze again. He's at scrum off, gets it out to Ivan Roos. He's been uh, quiet tonight. Done the hard work, the tackles and uh, the go for ball, but nothing special. And in Herschel Yankees, bloody hell, knocks that ball on. And it's going to be a scrum down to Ulster again. Right, so uh, scrum down here to uh, Ulster, just outside the 22. So they won't be able to kick it out directly if they do take it back into the 22. But I'm guessing that they will probably try and run it or kick it up high. Fifteen minutes to play in this game. A four-point margin here. With only one try coming in the opening five minutes of the game. But the Stormers at this stage, their own worst enemy here. 
Hats off to Ulster for defending. Big scrum again this time. John Cooney out to Doku, puts it downfield. They want to play in the Stormers' territory. It's Warwick Kalant who gets it. He's going to send it back with interest. Straight down the middle, a poor kick from him. And now sent back by uh, Ulster, straight into the hands of uh, Kalant again. He sends it back once again, and that's going to go direct into touch. Was he outside the 22? If not, it's a really good kick from Warwick Kalant. It's found touch uh, between the 22 and the 10-meter line inside the uh, Ulster's territory. So Stewart now to throw this one into the line. Out still five minutes left. On that uh, yellow card for Rolster. Can the Stormers cut out the mistakes or will Ulster keep going? They win the line out here and uh, the mall's gone down. So they need to play this one now. They can't get it out. It's going to be Stormers ball. Still waiting for it. Slowly coming out for Cooney. Now they do get it. In all rights, that should have been a scrum to the Stormers, but they have been given lots of time to get that ball eventually. Now John Cooney. Oh, that ball is out. Andre Smith absolutely hammers him in the tackle, but the ball came out to Nick Timoni. Now Doak at scrum off here. Now he's been pulled in. John Cooney back at scrum off here for them. Still all stay in possession. And uh, the pressure being put on them. Tremendous from the Stormers. They go with the box kick over the top. And now it's into the hands of Leland Zuss now. Zuss is going to try and charge his way through. Not going to get too much distance on it. Now Geland out to Lebok. Lebok out to Ben Lauder. Lauder. Lauder still going up to the 10 meter line. He's brought down now. Herschel Yankees, Ruben van Heeren, Warwick Geland. Out it goes to Marcel Tienissen. A little pop pass to Geland again. Oh, it's knocked on again by Manny Lebok this time. And now Ulster have possession. It's taken by Balakun. Run about uh, between the 10 meter line and the halfway line of Ulster. It's going to be a scrum down to uh, Ulster again. A little bit of confusion between Van Heerden and the uh, Livok as to who should have taken that pass and in the process knocking that ball on. <laughs> Dolly, uh, it's the second one, not the first. Right, so seven points to three it is with 12 minutes to play, less than 12 minutes to play. And uh, it's a scrum to Ulster between the 10 and the halfway line inside their own half. Scrum down. Can the Stormers force another penalty from the scrum? They should have taken the three points when it was an offer. But uh, you play the momentum game and uh, at that stage the momentum was with them. And a free kick here from this scrum to Ulster. And a chance to clear this ball downfield. So uh, things going wrong now for the Stormers here. As Nathan Doak will kick this high up into the air. Taken by Warwick Kalant between the 10 and the 22 inside Stormers half. Now Ben Lauder, Ruben van Heerden. Gets it out to Willem uh, Suleiman Hartzenberg. Gets man and ball, but takes it with him up over the 10 inside Stormers off. And here then back on the inside they go. Still Ruben van Heerden. Now you van Roos. Oh, the boss have gone forward, says the referee. I think it was off an Ulster player, but uh, he deems it was forward. And it will be a scrum to Ulster on a 10 meter line inside their own half. That's a big, big call. Let's see if he was right. Yeah, he was correct in the call there. 
Otherwise, here van Rus would have been into a little bit of space there. But uh, a great call there from the referee in the end. The win predictor now saying that Dalster will have a chance of 68% to win this game. So the Stormers have got exactly nine minutes to try and change that statistic. It's a scrum to Ulster on the 10 meter line inside their own half, about give or take 10 meters out from the far side touchline here. Nick Timoni, great player today for this uh, Ulster side. Scored the only try of the game. And now off the back, Cooney to Nathan Doak. Oh, he slips but gets the kick away. The bounce of the ball into the hands of Lauda. Now it's Warwick Kalant inside his 22. is going to kick this downfield. Not going to find touch, though. Now Cooney going high up into the air. Doak chasing after that ball. And Ivan Roos has lost it backwards, but it bounces into the hands of Ulster. Now Doak with a little cross kick straight into the hands of uh, Leland Zas. Now it's uh, Marcel Tennyson out to Damien Willems at just outside the 22 of the Stormers. Leland Zas goes to ground. Now Herschel Yankees back. It comes now. They need to move this wide. What a Kalant. He's got a prop in front of him. Now gets it out to Ivan Roos. Was that forward? Into the hands of Kotze. No, says the referee. Play on. Malherbe with a pass out to uh, Ben Lauder now. On the halfway line, the Stormers. Five meters from the right and touch line. Ruben van Heeren, Warwick Geland again. Now out to Suleiman Hartzenberg. Hartzenberg, Hartzenberg still going. Gets the pass out to Leland Sass. Great defense on him. Brought down on the 10 meter line inside Ulster's half. Now Ben Jason Dixon carries it up beautifully. Still they come as the Stormers now from Yerden. Penalty advantage to the Stormers now. Lubbock out wide. They go to uh, Suleiman Arzenberg. Here van der Roos beats one defender. Cuts back on the inside. Gets the pass away to JJ Kotze. But the ball stolen by Ulster. We're going to come back for the penalty. Six and a half minutes to go. Offside by Ulster. And... Uh, the storm is still on the attack. Now, surely they can't go for goal from here on. They have to go for the touch and make it work for them now. Time is off, is, uh, off on the clock as uh, Ulster receiving some attention here. Big decisions to make as uh, Ulster now back to 15 men as well. Not sure what it will do to the lock. Um, I'm almost sure Ulster will climb and the Stormers will go even further down. So Marcus Rea onto the field in the place of Matt Rea. So, uh, yeah. Seven minutes to go. It's a Stormers penalty. And... Uh, it's just outside the 22 towards the middle of the field. And the, the Stormers are going to have a kick to touch here. It's maybe just a little bit too late to have a, got a shot at goal. So the right decision here, five meters out from the try line. It almost looked like Lubbock overcooked that kick, but uh, just got it in time. Right, Kotze with the throw into this lineout. Can the Stormers steal this game now? It's been all Stormers in the second half. Van Heerden takes it in. Here comes the driving mall. The hit was good. And surely, surely it's over. It's a try to the Stormers. And uh, it's uh, who's going to claim it? It's uh, Ier van Roos who claims the try. And the Stormers, for the very first time in this game, takes the lead. With six minutes to go in this game. The lineout was good. The hit was even better. And then the drive came forward. There was no stopping that Stormers mall. And for the first time in this game, the Stormers take the lead.
great hit, great take, and uh, then just no stopping them. And uh, Jopan Roos with a great try. This time he wasn't going to knock it on. And the flags are flying blue and yellow there in the stands. Lubbock with a very important kick. He needs to get this one. Six minutes to play in this game. This conversion will put them up with three points and a penalty won't win it for Ulster. So very, very important. A couple of seasons back, he did a very important kick in the semi-finals right here in Cape Town to win it against Ulster. So almost the same context here for them. And this time he struck it gold. It's straight through the middle. And it's 10 points to 7, the Stormers lead. With 5 minutes to play. 5 minutes left in this one. And uh, the Stormers, for the very first time in this game, takes the lead. The restart from Ulster. Oh, they've managed to get that ball back, but slaps it into touch. So it will be a line-out to the Stormers. Round about on the 10-meter line inside their own half on the grandstand side of the field. The key players have stepped up here for the Stormers in this game. Some great offloading skills from uh, that replacement bench, especially in the likes of Ben Jason Dixon, Marcel Tienison, and uh, a great mention to JJ Kotze as well, who's had a decent game when he came onto the field. So, throw in to the back they go. Sloppy from the Stormers. But Yankees have managed to regather it. Although it's inside the 22 here. Or right on the touchline. Libok now gets it out to Ben Jason Dixon. Don't give away a penalty now. Stormers still in possession of this ball. Four minutes to go. Stormers have possession. Herschel Yankees waiting for that ball. Inside his own 22 now needs to get a good clearance kick away. And he does so. Not a lot of distance though. And it's the line out going to be between the 22 and the 10 meter line inside Stormers territory. A line out to Ulster on the grandstand side of the field. <laughs> Richard says when the Stormers were down, 10 minutes looked like a short time. Now five minutes left. It seems like a long time. Defense versus attack. The throw in from Stewart to come now. Oh, light out stolen by the Stormers. And it's a Kotze who breaks out here up to the half line. And now he's going to kick it downfield. That is going to be a 50-22 if that goes into touch. It's a beautiful kick from JJ Kotze. And uh, a line out to the Stormers. 10 meters from the Ulster try line now. Moment of magic and individual brilliance there. A, a hooker kicking the ball for a 50-22 there. Brilliant steal from Andre Smith. And then the kick from uh, JJ Kotze. Seeing the space at base for a hooker. That's absolutely brilliant. Two and a half minutes to go. And the Storm is now over line out 10 meters from the try line. Ruben van had a massive game from him today. And if the Stormers have to win this, I think he's definitely a man of the match uh, candidate. Line out taken beautifully by the Stormers. They set up another driving ball. It's going forward at a massive pace. Can I get over the try line? Two meters out. It's gone down. Now it's taken up. It's Mulherba. He's close to the try line. Now it's uh, Shul Yankees out to Ben Jason Dixon. Penalty advantage to the Stormers. Now Libok throws a little dummy, tries to go himself. He's held just short here. Now Yankees again out to Phillips. A long gutter pass. Too louder, but uh, the ball spills loose. And we will come back for another penalty to the Stormers. <coughs> what now? What do they do? Kick for goal. There's a minute and a half left. 
Have a shot at goal. Let the time go by. Right, so... Uh, woof. The Stormers have opted to go for the scrum here, which in uh, retrospect isn't a bad decision because they get less than uh, the minute and a half and risk losing the, the kickoff. So the decision has now been made by the Stormers to have the scrum here five meters out from the try line, kill down the time and win this game. But they need to be clinical. What a difference Andre Smith Ben Jason Dixon and Marcel Tienison has made uh, since they've come onto the field. Definitely the difference. The Storm is controlling the uh, second half just like uh, like Ulster did in that first half. We're completely dominating. And I almost want to say that that position and territory stats have just turned around and all those tackle stats surely has got to be probably the same as what uh, they did to uh, the Stormers in that first half. So uh, scrum to the Stormers, time running down, less than a minute to go. Richard says, uh, thanks for the three games in a row. No problem, Richard. So... We will have a scrum reset and exactly, I think, what the Stormers wanted as the clock just keeps running down. 20 seconds to go in this game. It's 10 points to 7. The Stormers will look to win the scrum and kick this ball out. Or even go for the, for the, for the, for the glory and prevent the Ulster from getting any points in this game. Oh, and here's the penalty. That's the game. The penalty to the Stormers right in front. Time is up. Manny Libok should just kick this one over in his sleep. And uh, you can hear in the background, the uh, even the dogs are celebrating here. So the Stormers have got this. They're already celebrating, but Libok still needs to take this kick. What's the chances of him hitting the upright here? <laughs> And play continue. But a hard for victory here for the Stormers. Um, an absolutely nail-biting finish to this game. And credit to the Stormers where it's due. They never gave up. Even when things were not going their way. They managed to stay in this game through some incredible defensive effort. And uh, just had enough to get that killer blow in the end. Well-deserved victory here for the Stormers. And... Uh, that's the sign of a really good site and a champion site nonetheless. Deserved winners two years back, deserved finalists last year, and uh, on their way again with that kick going over. It's 13 points to seven, final score here. And even though nail biting, an absolutely fantastic game, and uh, really thoroughly enjoyed this one. Thank you for everybody who's tuned in for this game. I had a ball today, and uh, congratulations to the Stormers on the victory. Uh, hard done for Ulster, but just couldn't keep the Stormers at bay for the full 80. And uh, yeah, the Carpers all on Svirfanan. Until next time, guys, this is the Rugby Guru. See you guys hopefully next weekend, but not guaranteed. Until next time, cheers for now.